Amen. Welcome to the Father's house. Amen. So good to be in the presence of the Lord. So good to worship with all of you. Amen. How many of you feel the presence of God tonight? I feel His presence. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You are in the right place to grow spiritually. Amen. Tonight is our midweek Bible study. This is Christian education. Amen. I love to learn and go deeper in God's Word. Amen. I hope that you have already decided that you've not arrived, that God can still teach you, right? Amen. And as I said last Wednesday, that Sunday morning's more of an evangelistical service. We can still worship like we do on Sunday, but tonight is maturing the mature. Wednesday nights, amen, we go a little bit deeper in God's Word. And tonight is going to be our third lesson on the parable of the sower. We'll be covering the third soil in this parable, which is the thorny ground. So if you have your Bibles tonight, ask that you would turn with me. Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, we will read all verses 1 through 9 tonight, and we will lay the foundation to look at tonight's subject matter, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 1. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him. So that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And in verse 7, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. What a great parable. And we are going to see what God has to say tonight as we look deeper into this parable. Let's pray together. Let's ask God to anoint our hearts and our minds to be receptive, receptive to what he has to say to us tonight. Father, thank you for what you're doing in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you for every man, woman, boy, and girl who is present. Father, I know that you care about us, you love us, and you've given us your word to, to strengthen us and to save us. I pray that, God, those of us that are here tonight that are mature can be more mature and we can continue to grow. And God, even if we don't know what we need to know and God perhaps someone's listening tonight that has never even received the Lord that God that something can be said tonight that would encourage and strengthen them and spur them on to make you God their Lord and Savior and God to be filled with your spirit and to live an overcoming life I pray this in Jesus name and the church said amen praise God praise God as you Shake one or two people's hands tonight. Amen. Remember, Cross Point Church is a judgment-free zone. We do not want to judge one another. We want to love one another. We want to encourage each other to go deeper in the things of God and to grow. Amen. Bearing one another's burdens, the Bible says, to fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. Let's do a little bit review. We do this every time I get into a series parable of the sower, 
is about four kinds of soil. And the soil, which is the earth, represents the condition of man's heart. The seed, the little seeds that the sower sows, is the gospel or the words of God, the word of God. The scripture declares that man will either have one of the four different kinds of hearts, one of the four different kinds of soils that we see here in this parable. The first one is wayside. The Bible says the fowls came and devoured them up. Second is stony, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up very quickly because they had no deepness of earth. They had nowhere to go but just even to sprout up quickly and then they died. The third one tonight is thorny ground. The Bible says the thorns sprung up and choked them. The thorns sprung up and choked them. And then lastly, good ground. And the Bible says, and we've read, it brings forth 160 and 30 fold. And that is the kind of heart that we want to have. And that is the kind of heart we need to pray that the people that we are seeking to save, the people that we are wanting to hear the gospel message, those that we are sharing the word of God with, that's the kind of heart, that's the kind of soil that we want them to have. Last week, though, in our lesson on the stony places, I mentioned that in some parts of Palestine, lying right beneath the ground is a layer of limestone. When seeds fall upon this ground, something Dramatic happens, right? The limestone holds the rain and heat from the sunlight right under the surface. Therefore, the fallen seed sprouts quickly, dramatically. But sadly, it has no root, and thus it dies. When it comes to having a stony heart, those of us, people that hear the word or the message, the gospel, makes a decision for Christ, right? They stand out as an example of one that has a changed life, but they just have quick growth. However, the changed life lasts only for a short time, and it ends up failing. As I said last week, that there's nothing wrong in coming to to Jesus quickly. Nothing wrong with turning your life over to him in a moment, but... We need to have enough earth to where that seed can grow deep into our life and that can become who we are, amen, not something like a flash in the pan and then it's gone. Why does it end up failing? Well, the problem is not with the seed, right? The problem is not with the word of God, for there is no problem with God's word. The problem is not with the saving message of his gospel because he is still a saving, he is still a God that saves and his gospel is still very powerful. The problem is the condition of the person's heart. It is the condition of the person's heart. Their faith in God and their love for truth is a shallow one. It is a thin Everybody say thin, layer of soil over a bed of rock. Amen. This kind of heart wants and notices the need to change, but it is not ready to live a life committed or sold out to God. When trouble, when trouble, persecution, commitment, or worldly fun comes their way, right? They give it all up very quickly. There's no commitment. There's no, there's no uh, deepness to them. There's, there's nothing there to hold them where they need to be. You see, some people accept the gospel quickly and lay it aside just as quickly. The biggest problem I mentioned last Wednesday was the, le- the biggest problem for the stony heart is that they are not self-feeders. I want you to say that out loud. self Feeders. That is very, very crucial 
Very, very important. Each and every Christian believer must become, they must, you and I must become one that feeds ourselves spiritually and feeds upon God's word often, if not daily. We need to feed upon God's word very often. But if you don't become a self-feeder, if you don't fall in love with God, if you do not fall in love with the doctrines and the principles of Christianity, then you will not continue to grow. You will die very quickly. It's simple. There's no other way around it. If you and I do not do what is important, if you and I do not fall in love, amen, with Christ and His Word, you and I will have little to zero spiritual strength to withstand the trials the circumstances, the sins and the vices of the enemy and whatever other pressures come our way in this life. If a new believer or even a long-time believer, those of us that have been living for God for some time, I look out and I see people that have been living for God for a few years. Then I see people that have been living for God for years upon years, maybe 20, 30, 40 years. Even you tonight, If you, the believer, who's been serving God for a long time, if you do not become and stay a self-feeder, feeding on spiritual things, feeding on the Word of God, walking in the Spirit, you will slowly, yes, even your pastor, if he does not stay a self-feeder, if I do not commit to making God the highest priority in my life, I will slowly slip away and lose my desire. I will lose my motivation for doing what is right and for living holy. And it's so very important, church, that we are all self-feeders. Amen. That we fall in love with God's Word. You and I have a choice. Amen. I've said it so many times, so many times. Amen. You, are, you and I are the product of the choices that we make. Amen. It is a heart issue. These four soils boils down to, amen, what you and I choose to be. If we are going to choose to be one of these four soils, we determine our destiny. We determine where we will spend eternity. Amen. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I repeat myself a lot. The same sun that hardens clay melts snow. What are you going to do with the message? What are you tonight going to do with the preached word? What are you going to do? Are you going to be a consumer? Or are you going to say, no, I'm not going to come, amen, and just be a consumer. I'm not just going to come and say to myself, what is the church going to do for me? But I am going to read God's word. I am going to align, amen, with the purpose of, and the plan that God has for my life. And I am not just going to be one, amen, that, that comes to church and stays on the defensive. But I am going to determine tonight that I am going to go on the offensive. That I am going to live my life, amen, pursuing a relationship, an overcoming relationship with God. Amen. amen. So let's move on tonight to our third Soil, which is the thorny ground. Everybody say, thorny ground. All right, so let's see what the Scriptures is saying about the thorny ground. The thorns here represent those who receive the Word as an addition to their life. It's just something else. Just another thing, right? The Word of God is merely an add-on and not allowed to replace their old life. The Bible talks about this. You cannot have it both ways, right? You cannot continue to live the life that you live in the world and then just bring Christ on board and stay the same. Doesn't work that way. The Word of God is merely an add-on and not allowed to replace 
the old life, not allowed to replace the world and the things in it. You see, this soil or condition of the heart represents the person. Everybody take your finger and point at me. God forbid that we will be this kind of person, but I'm talking to you tonight, I'm talking to myself. This soil or condition of the heart represents the person who is so busy. Busy with other things that he or she chooses not to be busy for Christ. They make him only a small part of their affairs. Consequently, the word will always be choked out. It will always be choked out because you can't, you can't put sweet and bitter in the same temple. You can't, you can't have light and darkness. No, you have to make up your mind, right? Let's keep going. You see, life does get busy. There's always stuff. Everybody say stuff. There's always going to be stuff. Everybody say some things. There's always going to be some things, something to do. But you see, here it is again. Here we are reminded again, it has nothing to do with the seed. The seed is perfect. God's word is perfect. It's perfect in every way. But you see, it's not the seed. It has everything to do with my heart. It is always a heart issue. You see, thorns grow up before we know it. I declare to the church tonight, beware of the thorns. Beware of the thorns. What are the thorns, Pastor? Jesus explains them as being the cares of the world. Jesus says they are the cares of the world. In Mark chapter 4, in verse 19, in Mark chapter 4, in verse 19, the scripture reads, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. I want to read this again. Mark 4, 19. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering into my life, entering into my heart, they choke the word and it become unfruitful. It is extremely vital that we tonight, who are the church, and those of us who want to stay committed to God, those of us who want to stay committed to His Word and grow and mature, understand this next statement that I am going to make. And here it is. We will never be without the cares of the world. Let that sink in. We will never be without the cares of this world. Period. As long as you and I are alive, we will always have to wrestle with and fight against the deceitfulness of riches and we will fight against the cares of this world. We will always have to fight against other lusts that come up in our lives that try to choke out our relationship with God. There's not a person in here, amen, other than some of our little children that, that do not, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Many of us in our past, many of us even in our Christian journey know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to the cares of this world. Amen. That is why Paul declares, amen, that 
we have to overcome the world, right? We cannot love this present world. That we have to die daily to this flesh. You and I have to mortify this body. I've said it before. Our flesh never gets the Holy Ghost. Amen. Other lusts are going to rise up. Amen. Other lusts are going to rise up in our life. And if you and I are not careful, the thorns of this life, the thorns, amen, of this world will try to choke the very spiritual life out of every last one of us. There will be something, something from this wicked world that will prick or pick away at our devotion. It will pick away at our devotion. It'll pick away at our commitments to God. It'll pick away at our church attendance. It'll pick away, amen, at our focus when the preacher's preaching. It'll pick away, amen, day after day, making us, amen, making us fall deeper in love, amen, with the things of this world, amen, causing a greater chasm, a, a greater breach between us and God, taking, amen, us away from our love for God, picking away at our faithfulness to the Lord. You see, there will be some type of thorn. Church, let's just get it. Let's just own it. Let's just... Realize it. Let's just know it tonight that there will be some type of thorn, some type of care of this world that will try to choke out our relationship with God and take us away from doing God's divine will in our life and try to render all of us unfruitful. It's the plan of the enemy. That is the plan of the devil. That's the plan, amen, from the, get, the beginning, amen, so that you and I are not fruitful that we are rendered useless, that we, we care more about our flesh, that we care more about our life, we care more about this world than we do care, than we care about the things of God, amen, the church, uh, and making heaven our home. Amen. You see, this is why they are called thorns. And this is why the scripture declares that there will be lusts, of other things that will try to enter into our heart and deceive us. There are three principles. I won't spend a whole lot, whole lot of time on there, on this. Three principal forces that oppose the Christian. You've heard this. The three principal forces that, that oppose the Christian, it is the flesh, the world, and the devil. Those are the three opposing forces that you and I will fight every day. The flesh, the world, and the devil. These powerful forces combined together attempt to hinder the Christian from living a spiritual and victorious life. You see, the devil dominates the world. The devil dominates the world. And the world then caters to the desires of my flesh. Does that make sense? If you get that, I've, I've mentioned all three. The devil dominates the world, and then the world caters to the desires of my flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 4 says, in whom the God of this world, who is Satan, the God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan is the God of this world, and his kingdom opposes the kingdom of God. All sins, as I've said before in lessons past, all sins can be found under three categories of evil. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These threefold evils are employed by Satan and must be destroyed in our lives as we if we are ever going to allow the works of the Spirit to operate in our lives. You see, a person, you and I are people, we cannot 
travel two directions at the same time. When, when we are going north, we can't be going south at the same time. If we're going up, we can't be going down at the same time. You see, it's important that we understand what our parable is talking to us about. It's talking about the thorny ground. Very interesting as we get into it a little bit deeper now. The thorny ground can be deceiving and deceptive ground. It can look and appear clean and free of weeds and thorns, but it's not. Notice that earthly things, thorns, may or may not necessarily be bad in themselves. We got earthly things. We got things we enjoy doing, right? I mean, this world is filled with a lot of fun things, a lot of pleasures, a lot of responsibilities, a lot of obligations, a lot of, a lot of uh, roads to travel, a lot of places to see, things to do, right? There's a lot of stuff for you and I. They're not necessarily bad things. Many times... They're not. Good things can occupy our time as well as bad things. Right? Are you guys awake tonight? You're a little bit quiet. All right? Maybe somebody could say amen or something. All right, just so I know you're still here. I didn't know the lights are still on. But good things can occupy our time as well as the bad. And more often than not, it is the good things that can hear me more often than not. It is the good things that can drain our energies and turn our hearts away from doing what is right and necessary in our everyday Christian walk. Take a look. Let's take a look at our text and at verse 7. Verse 7 says, And some fell among thorns. If you stop there, you would think that the thorns were already visible. But then it says the seed fell among thorns. They weren't visible if I'm reading this accurately or rightly dividing it. And then it says the thorns sprung up and choked them. You see, the roots to the thorns are already there. There's things already in our lives, possibly prior to us coming to the Lord. There's things that are already present, right? Roots to the thorns are already there. The good seed fell among thorns that were below the surface. Most often we cannot see. Most often you and I cannot see the danger until it is too late. This is one area that there cannot be balanced, church. We talk a lot about balance in the Christian walk. But this is one area that there cannot be balance. God's business must be the underlining purpose. God's business must be the driving force in our life. Nothing else, amen, nothing else can be the purpose for why I exist. Nothing else in my life can be the driving force. Not a spouse, not a job. Not a hobby, not a ministry, come on, nothing, absolutely nothing can be more purposeful than God. Nothing can be more important, amen, than the will of God, the purpose of God in my life. Again, as it was with all the other soils, each heart heard the word, but... The heart didn't receive it because of its condition. So, tonight, this is why we come to church, right? So we can grow, we can mature, we can evaluate, we can can apply what we're hearing, right? We're studying the Word of God. I'm mature, but I want to be more mature. I want to be apt to teach. I want to grow deeper in the things of God. I want Christian education. I want God to help me to understand. So I've got to see what soil I am. Am I wayside? Am I stony? Am I thorny? Is there something in my life right now? 
amen, that like a, like a jockey on a racehorse, amen, that is competing with the things of God in my life. Is there something that's turning the corner? Amen. I can see it. There's something that has priority over God and God's will in my life. You see, with the thorny, right under the surface of the soil, right under the surface of our hearts, there can be roots, roots of thorns and weeds that can spring up and choke out the good seed, the good ground that our Christian life is trying to produce. You see, this is done by allowing the cares of this world to become more important. How is this done? How is it that these thorns spring up and choke us, right? It is done by allowing the cares of this world to become more important than our cares and our concern for God and the things of God. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 a lot of us, when we hear that passage even mentioned, we tune it out because it's so common to us. Most of us could quote that verse, and so we're saying, in, in, in our conscious, in our subconscious, we're saying, Pastor, I've heard Matthew 6, 33 so much that, 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 that it, it doesn't mean so much to me, but I, I would pray tonight that you would rethink that, that you would say, hey, that is a very vital and important scripture. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom. You and I will do that. Not just up here, but here. We'll not just seek first the kingdom up here and here, but we'll do it with our feet. We'll do it with our hands. We're going to do it with our pocketbooks. We're going to do it with our mouth. We're going to do it with every, everything that we are. The Bible says that we are to, what? Serve God with all of our heart soul, mind, and strength. There's nothing, amen, that we can withhold. We can hold back. No, we got to throw ourselves all in if we are going to make it, right? Seek first the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness and all these things that, all these things that are, that's a study in itself right there. Everything that you and I need in this life, everything that will satisfy, everything that, because obviously we know there are things, Sister Cindy, that we don't need. But you see, when I'm focused on the kingdom, when I'm, when I'm living in his righteousness, all those other things that my flesh wants doesn't even matter. It's the things that God's going to give to me that matters. All these things that God wants to give me will be added unto me so we must build our life i've said this we must build our life around the church we must build our life around god's will not the other way around you can't do the if you do it the other way around you're going to struggle i'm telling you we can't build the church around our life we can't build the church around our will that's a person that allows the thorns to spring up and choke them hear me a thorn is anything that crowds jesus out of your life a thorn is anything that stops you from growing i mean we could have a large list here tonight. That's what I'm saying. It's not just drugs and alcohol. It's not just, you know, codependency. But I mean, it, it could be things that, that seem very harmless. But if that harmless thing has precedence, if that harmless thing has rulership, if that harmless things has ownership of our life, then it is a thorn. Then it is a weed. And it springs up and it chokes out our maturity. It chokes out our growth. It chokes out of everything that God is trying to do with our life. Good or bad, it doesn't matter what it is. 
if it is keeping us from growing up in God's word, if it's keeping, up from st- keeping us from staying faithful to the principles and the work of Christ, the work of Christ, don't buy into the lie of the grace-only messages. This world, this, the, the, the traditional and, and, and the charismatic movement have, has told us that works don't save you. You can see it in the scripture over and over and over. The Bible says it's not by works alone. The Bible says that you and I are a workman. We are to be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. we got to be a workman. Don't buy into that lie. It's a lie from the devil that you don't have to do things. Now, you can't save yourself. Stop working for a month and go down to your employer and ask for your paycheck. Good or bad, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's keeping you, if it's keeping me from growing up in God's word and staying faithful to the principles and the works of Christ, then it is a thorn. And it is choking you and I and we need to kill it and get rid of it. We, we, we got to get some roundup, right? We got we to gotta, we gotta focus on, amen, our spiritual life. We must not let anything hinder us or take our focus and priorities off or away from God and doing his will for our lives. When our minds are not on God... When our minds are not on the things of God, they will be on the things of this world, which will cause you and I to be more carnal-minded and will cause us not to be spiritually minded. Matthew 6, 24. Here's another scripture that's powerful. The Bible says that no man can serve two masters. This is not talking about, you know, that he can only be married to one wife, you know. There's a few of you that are here with me. No man can serve two masters. The Bible says for either he will hate the one and love the other. Can you you see what he's saying here? You can't love both. You You can't love God and mammon. You can't love this world and God too. The Bible says love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, It's very simple to me. It's very simple. And I know it's simple to you. Amen. It's simple when you and I make up our mind. It's simple when we decide that there's not going to even be a question, right? There's not going to be a question. Either we will hate the one and love the other or else else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. See, hear me, church. We all stand in danger of being choked to death spiritually. That's what the Bible says. It, there's going to be four kinds of soil. One seed, one, one seed, four kinds of soil. We choose by choosing what kind of heart we're going to have. If we're, we're going to be one that's going to listen and obey. Right? I love the story of the He that builds his house upon the sand is like the man that hears the word and doesn't obey. But the man that builds his house upon the rock is the one that hears the word and obeys. Very important. If you and I cannot decipher between what is good and profitable and fruitful and what is not, If we don't know how to decipher, our lives will be cumbered by this and that until the good within us will be smothered out. We've got to have spiritual perception. And again, the Holy Ghost is so crucial and so important because the Bible said it's our teacher and guide. 
The Bible said it teaches us all things. It leads us and guides us. The Bible says that with the Holy Ghost, we can walk in the Spirit. And when we walk in the Spirit, we are the sons and the daughters of Christ. <laughs> no matter how strong a person is, they cannot serve two masters. It doesn't matter how, I mean, it doesn't matter, I mean, if you got, you know, huge biceps and, you know, you've got, you got just, you're, you can run, you can run a marathon, it doesn't matter how strong a person is, you cannot serve two masters, and not even the best of us, not, not even the best of us is able to produce a crop of wheat and a crop of thorns at the same time, because the Bible says the thorns are going to choke out that which is spiritual. The scripture mentions one thing in particular, and I'm going to try to wrap this up very quickly. The scripture mentions one thing in particular here regarding a thorn. Now, it talks about other lusts, right? Regarding a thorn that is a care of the world, he says is this, is the deceitfulness of riches. Everybody say the deceitfulness of riches. How many, like to, how many like to have a lot of money? Some of you are not telling the truth. You're not. You're not telling the truth. You are fibbing. How many in here would like to have a lot of money? Everybody in here. Can I tell you that being rich is of God? Being rich is okay? Let me prove it scripturally here. Notice, it's not wealth itself that is worldly. It's a deceitfulness of riches. It's not wealth that is wrong. All throughout the Old Testament, God's people were blessed. They had, they had more than, than many others. And I'm not, I'm not preaching a prosperity doctrine here at all. I'm just trying to show you that it's not wealth itself that is worldly. It's not wealth itself that's thorny. But it's the deceit of wealth. Wealth can deceive us in several ways. I'll give you four ways that wealth can deceive you. Number one, wealth tends to make a person what? Self-confident and self-dependent. Have you ever met those kind of people? They don't need God. They don't need church. It's not wealth itself that's bad. It's the deceit of wealth. And wealth does tend to make a person self-confident and self-dependent. Second, wealth tends to make us Americans. Let's just pick on Americans. Wealth tends to make us Americans overly comfortable, extravagant, and indulgent. The deceit of wealth. Thirdly, wealth tends to consume a person's mind. Have you ever seen those people that are, they, they, they're constantly growing their portfolio? You may be growing a portfolio, but if, if, it's not, if it's not a thorn to you, then it's okay, right? It's the deceit of wealth. It's not wealth itself. I've said this many times. God doesn't care how much you have just as long as what you have doesn't have a hold of you. You see, God's people can be blessed financially and that those blessings financially, amen, do not have to be a thorn to you. They do not choke you out. Why? Because you know where your wealth comes from and you know it is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. You know that all that you have is God's anyway. You're a steward of what God has blessed you with. And then number four, wealth tends to misinterpret the blessings of God. Yep, I've done this. This is all on, I, well, I'm, wow. I will be at the PAC. This coming Friday night, giving my dissertation on all of my abilities and how I become a billionaire, right? 
you misinterpret. It becomes all about you rather than about the blessings of God. The cares. Now, what I'd like you to do is look at those four tendencies of wealth and apply it to every area of your life. Amen. We cannot be self-confident and self-dependent. We've got to be... My confidence comes from God, right? My dependency is in God. Amen? I do not get overly comfortable because the Bible says I've got to take up my cross and follow Jesus. Amen? I, amen, do not want to live an extravagant and indulgent uh, life in this world. I want to live an extravagant and indulgent life in pursuing God. Amen? Amen? Hear me, it's important. And I do not want to let this world consume my mind. I want to be totally dependent upon God and not dependent upon this world. And then I know that, amen, my blessings are from the Lord. The musicians would come. We can learn from this and make sure that we do not allow anything to become more important than God. We can make sure... Amen, that we are living in his divine will and purpose every day. How do we do that? Amen, how do we do that? Amen, we do that by simply making God the highest priority every day of my life, every moment of my life. And that even means on a tiresome Wednesday night at church during Christian education, amen. I am not going to close off my mind. I'm not going to shut out, amen, my ears, but I am going to receive from the word of God. And when I wake up tomorrow morning, I am going to know who I am in Christ Jesus. And I am not going to let any thorn or any weed choke the purpose of God in my life. I'm not going to let, amen, they may be there. Those things are there. We already learned that. They're, they're there. They're present in my life. That's the whole point of my lesson tonight. That's the whole point of number three. Thorny ground is that they're all present. The cares of the world will always be there. Will you stand with me? The cares of the world will always be in our life. The point is, the takeaway is, we cannot allow them to choke us out. The only way you do that is by staying strong in faith, staying strong in his word. take care of those thorns he'll take care of those weeds and I believe that they say and I'm not I'm not sure about it but they say that if you got healthy grass it actually chokes out the weeds that's what they say so let's be determined tonight that we are going to pursue God without any limit right pursuing God without any limit at all that I am going to give it my all in serving him. And those, those, those thorns and those tares and those weeds will die simply because of my commitment and faithfulness to the Lord. I want you to ponder as we sing tonight in closing. Ponder this message. Apply it to your life. Grow and mature. Amen. In God and be all that you can be.
I am pursuing you, Jesus. I'm pursuing you. Asata la kapla masata baba. tonight. This church has always been a church that loves truth, loves to hear the word of God. Amen. Thank you for receiving it. Thank you for growing spiritually and desiring to be all that God wants you to be. God bless you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll see you back here on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. God bless you. Invite somebody to church with you. Amen. God bless you.